wealth خذ من أموالهم صدقة تطهرهم وتزكيهم بها الله سبحانه وتعالى was addressing Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم ordering him to you know take or to collect zakat al-mal from his companions رضي الله عنهم by saying خذ من أموالهم أو محمد collect their zakat in order for them to purify their souls and their wealth as as well now how about the technical meaning of الزكاة technical meaning or according to the Islamic jurisprudence تعريفه الزكاة في الفقه الإسلامي it is a prescribed charity so we are not talking about the optional you know payment or the optional charity that people might pay whenever they want we are talking about the obligatory one in specific assets meaning that not everything you have is subject to zakah should be paid for a specific recipients and those recipients actually have been divinely oriented or you know it's one of the pillars of, uh, of Islam this is take my water نعم إن شاء الله. It is one of the pillars of of Islam in more than 25 different places in the Quran. Allah سبحانه وتعالى associated his commands of performing a salah along with paying zakat al mal. يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة. أقيم الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة. وأقيم الصلاة and so on so forth. This is just to show the importance and the significance of performing zakat al mal and paying it according to the commands of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. It causes actually freedom from fear on the day of judgment. In Surah Al-Baqarah, when, 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 when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala was describing, you know, uh, or you know, mentioning some of the qualities or characteristics of the believers, He said, "الذين ينفقون أموالهم بالليل والنهار سرا وعلنا." Those who spend for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala openly and secretly day and night, until He said, "ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون." So they will, they all, those people will be free from any. Fear in the day of uh, judgment. Uh, in the same surah, which is Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala was counting some of the qualities of the of the believers, الذين ألف لام من ذلك الكتاب ولا ريب فيه ودن المتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. He said, ومما رزقناهم ينفقون. Those who pay from whatever we have provided for them. What is the consequence or the result of this payment? He said, Subhanahu wa Taala, أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون. So it causes success in this life and in the hereafter. Now, on the contrary, on the on the on the other hand, what if someone failed in paying the cattle man for no legitimate reason? Listen to those ayat that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is is warning those who do not take the زكاة إشيو سيريسلي as it should be taken. The first warning is وويل للمشركين الذين لا يؤتون الزكاة. According to this ayah, one of the qualities or the characteristics of the disbelievers actually of the polytheists is that they do not pay زكاة المال. It doesn't necessarily mean that you know anyone who refrains from paying زكاة المال is a مشرك, but it means that one of the characteristics of the disbelievers is that they do not pay you know the 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 due زكاة that Allah سبحانه وتعالى ordered his people to you know, to pay it. The other warning is, سَيُطَوَّقُونَ مَا بَخِلُوا بِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ What they stingily, out of, uh, out of miserliness and stinginess, what, you know, whatever they stingily withhold, shall be hung around their necks on the day of resurrection. So it is actually a severe warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who do not take this issue seriously and, you know, fulfill their duties toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all know why why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala prescribed the 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 zakah. Okay. It's it's one of the one of the pillars of Islam that we should have the feeling, or even the tranquility, or the khushu' or the concentration that we have when we perform our salah, because they are they are like like each other. I mean, when we when we perform our salah, we do it because it is a command from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We should have the same feeling whenever we pay the cat and It is a it is a formal act of worship in which a Muslim should, you know, pay it and fulfill this duty, you know, to keep himself on the safe side when it comes to his relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It creates actually a just society in which every single person should act responsibly and feel the pain of those people who were deprived from having a luxurious life like other, you know, uh, members in the in the society. 
So it should create, you know, this, 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 you know, this kind of love and, and respect between the people and the, and the society when every single person is acting responsibly and share some of his wealth with the less fortunate people who, who were deprived from having, you know, the life that they are looking for. What we will cover in this seminar, inshallah, many topics that we need to be aware of. The first one is substituting zakah by taxes, whether it is allowed or not. I mean, if someone is paying his zakat regularly, accordingly, is it sufficient for him or should he pay zakat women in addition to the tax that he pays for the government? Is there any difference between the zakah and the taxes that we pay? What are the zakatable worth or the, you know, the, the, the assets or the wealth that you have in which they are subject to zakah? And on the contrary, the uh, non-zakatable wealth, some of the assets and the wealth that you have are not subject to zakah. What are those, you know, kinds of assets that you should not worry about them and you should not pay zakat and mal for them? Zakatability means, means the stipulations or the conditions have to be completely satisfied. in order for the you know, person to be subject to zakah. Zakat ability for the wealth, the conditions for the wealth itself to be subject to zakah. What do you mean by threshold versus poverty line? Khattu al-faqr muqarunatan ma'a al-nisab. Because actually some people get, get confused. They think that poverty line is the nisab and nisab is the poverty line. The reality actually is something or there's a big difference between the two. Which one should we adopt as a standard to you know, to address a person uh, or to, you know, consider a person is eligible to take from the zakah or uh, um, to take him as a, 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 as a wealthy person that he or she has to pay zakat to man. Which one? Is it the poverty line or the threshold? This, inshallah, will be, will be covered. Combining assets to reach nisab. Do we have to combine different assets to constitute nisab or not? Consistency of uh, possessing the should we have the nisab during the whole year from the beginning until the end or it will be sufficient if we have it in the beginning and in the end of the uh, zakat due date salaries and professional fees if we have some doctors, some engineers, some accountants some you know, people who provide service for the community and they, you know, they charge professional fees how to calculate their zakat if uh, uh, some of the sisters have jewelry and ornaments how to calculate zakat and mal retirement fund, like for example your 401k plan, your annuity, your uh, pension plan, how to, how to pay your zakat, if you have some stocks or, or shares or bonds, how to you know, pay your, your, your zakat, if you are in debt or if you are the lender, the one who provides you know, money for, for, for others, who is the one who should pay zakat? If you pay a monthly payment for, for your house, you know, the, 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 the mortgage or the monthly payment or for your car, should you pay the cat and mail or how to deduct this, you know, monthly uh, payment, how to determine the value or the market value of the asset that you have, you know, in order for you to be able to calculate your zakat. Uh, if you have some agricultural products, is it zakatable or not? If you have livestock or wine or bovine, who are the, the zakat recipients in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated in the, in the Qur'an, who are the people who are not eligible to receive the cat and mal? Are there any restrictions in distributing the cat and mal? Should you distribute it locally here in the U.S. or you can transfer it overseas and based on what you can transfer it and so on and so forth? Some other, you know, jurisprudential points and rules regarding the cat and mal. Who is in charge in collecting and distributing the cat and mal? Are there any, any conditions or uh, um, qualifications required for the person to, you know, take care of the cat and mal. Is it allowed to transfer the cat and mal, you know, to a different country or it should be distributed locally and so on and so forth. The first point actually I would say that, that there is no way, there is no way for the cat and mal to be substituted with, with the, you know, the government and tax, government and tax that we pay for the government for many reasons. The most important one is that zakah is a permanent and continuous pillar of Islam. It is a religious obligation, it's not a governmental one. Because actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who, 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 who made it obligatory upon us. But when it comes to the, you know, the, 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 the government and tax actually, it has nothing to do with our religion as Muslims. It has a lot to do with, with our residents here in this society as American people who are required to you know, pay the, their governmental taxes. 
the other difference is that the recipients, the people who will, you know, take the the, the money and uh, and enjoy it, actually have been divinely designated by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Azza wa Jalla did not even allow Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam to take care of the zakat recipients. Rather, he was the one who, you know, divinely pointed the, you know, the eight different categories of the recipients of zakat. إنما الصدقات للفقراء والمساكين والعاملين عليها والمؤلفة قلوبهم and so on and so forth. <coughs> So they cannot be, I mean, the cattle man cannot be substituted with with the tax. If someone already did his 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 tax or paid his, his tax, it's not sufficient for him. I mean, to clear his record with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, whether he or she should pay the cattle man in addition to that. Some other differences between the zakat and the governmental tax that we pay on an annual basis here in the U.S. When it comes to the to the you know amount subject to zakah, zakah actually is paid on one's remaining wealth. What does that mean, remaining wealth? That's that that you you made in 2000, uh, 2007, you made one hundred thousand, and you already spent you already spent seventy thousand. Now the amount subject to zakah, the zakatable amount, is the remaining wealth, regardless of the total you know annual income that you make. When it comes to the calculation of your uh, your governmental tax. It's a different story. They go with the with the with the annual with the annual income, not with the remaining. Definitely, they take into consideration the number of the household and and some other expenses and the deductibility of some you know expenses. This is you know something uh, uh, is considered. But basically, basically, the cattle mal is to be calculated based on the remaining wealth, while you know the tax is to be calculated based on the annual or the total income. In some circumstances, for some people, for some reasons, uh, the, the the tax could be could be waived, and you know it happens sometimes. But when it comes to the cattle mal, no one has the authority to waive the cattle mal from anybody else because Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who ordered us to pay the cattle uh, mal. Among the differences is that, generally speaking. The zakat ranges, you know, from 2.5 up to 20 percent, and the 20 percent actually is the is the rate only for one category of 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 the of the assets that we have, which is the treasure troves or a uh, uh, It does not go, you know, beyond or more than 20 percent, never ever. But when it comes to the tax that we pay, sometimes believe it or not, you know, it goes up to 50 percent of your wealth has to be paid, you know, for the for the government. But generally speaking. 2.5 is the rate or the general rate for the for the zakah. As far as the reward is is concerned, the zakat payers do not expect actually any reward in this life more than the reward and the appreciation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the hereafter. While when it comes to paying the uh, the, the tax, actually the taxpayers receive direct or indirect. Services like here in the U.S., uh, m m uh, education, Medicaid, uh, Medicare, uh, uh, welfare, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Actually, we, you know, we, we we benefit from the tax that we, you know, pay, but we do not benefit from the zakah that we give to uh, the eligible people. Now, what are the zakatable wealth? What kind of assets that you should have out and to, you know, uh, know how to calculate your zakat or almal? The first one is what we call it the personal zakatable wealth. Personal zakatable wealth means any wealth that you have which has nothing to do with you as a businessman or as a merchant. Anything that has no affiliation with your job, with your career, with your you know uh, profession as as a businessman or whatever you, uh, your 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 career is. So any money on hand, any money in your checking account, in your saving account, any. In the stock, you know, stock market, um, any money that you have in your retirement or, or, or pension account is considered as personal zakatable wealth. Definitely, it is subject to zakah. The other one is the business zakatable wealth. Business zakatable wealth mean, meaning any merchandise that you physically have on the shelves. They are offered for you know, I mean, I mean, whatever you put in your in your store for 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 sale. Okay, the, the 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 trading goods, the merchandise, the exploited assets. Exploited uh, exploited assets uh, actually means the cattle 
المستغلات exploited assets it means that if you hold the asset I mean if, if the asset itself is not subject I mean, I mean it's not for sale but you make money you, you generate money out of using you know this kind of wealth or this kind of asset like for example uh, um, um, rental properties if you have a, a, a apartment complex for example for, for rent if you have a taxi cab, if you have a laboratory, if you have a, uh, um, you know, um, as I said, you know, uh, uh, factors and so on and so forth. The difference between the the first and the second one is that when it comes to the exploited assets, as I said, the asset itself is not for sale. You do not you do not trade in it. You keep it for yourself. But you generate or you make money out of using or exploiting, you know, this this asset. Definitely, the revenue uh, and the money generated out of using the exploited assets is subject to zakah while the asset itself is not subject to zakah also the agricultural products like irrigated or non-irrigated land يعني سواء كانت مسقية أم غير مسقية is subject to subject to uh, uh, zakah any livestock that you have you know uh, primarily uh, sheep, goat, cows and buffaloes are subject to uh, zakah within some some limits and some you know conditions if all those conditions are fulfilled then the livestock you have is subject to zakah treasure troves or zakatu al rikaz what do you mean by zakatu al rikaz any valuables that people have buried and left for you know from long time ago any precious metals and you know gemstones whatever is considered a valuable thing have been you know hidden you know in the in, in the earth from long time is considered nowadays as rikaz or treasure troves it could be classified in two different main categories the hidden windfalls and discovered fortune al kunuz and the other one is oil and mining so the oil that we have here in texas actually is subject to the cap it is owned by some individuals and not by by the government what else we have a rule or qaida if the asset itself is not subject to zakah Islamically, then the revenue or the money that you make out of this asset is subject to zakah. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, the, the, you know, something has to uh, has to be subject to zakah. Like for example, honey from bees. We know from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that the bees themselves, if you have bees, they are not subject to zakah. But what, what if you are making thousands of dollars out of having you know honey from bees? Actually, the the honey itself is subject to zakah. There is a weak narration. But however, it is it is you know uh, accepted by the by the fuqaha that yeah, I mean I mean to be implemented that that fil 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 asali al ushr. I mean if you have honey, then you have to pay ten percent of the uh, of the market value of the honey as a, as a zakah. Data from livestock. If the livestock you know did not constitute any sab, and you make you know good money out of having dairy products and you sell and you trade in the dairy product, then the money that you make is subject to zakah eggs from uh, poultry, silk from silk worms and so on and so forth so the rule here again you know, one more time is that if the asset itself is not subject to zakah then you know the products the products or the money have been generated out of using these assets are subject to zakah but something has to be subject to uh, zakah now if we have zakah Wealth. On the other hand, we do have some non-zakatable wealth. What are the assets or the wealth that you have which is not subject to zakat? Any property for personal or family or non-commercial use. Like, for example, the food stored in your house for you know consumption for yourself, for your family. Clothing you have, the residence, I mean the domicile or the apartment or the house that you use for your personal residence is not subject to zakat, whether, it, whether it, its market value is is within the average more or less it does not make any any difference transportation is the same there is a point here that we need to take into consideration some people think that if a Muslim have reached the level of uh, extravagance like for example if he needs only two cars and he has five cars some people think that the three extra cars are subject to zakah because he exceeded the limit actually there is no clue or indication in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ showing that those assets are subject to zakah because there is a difference between the zakatability of the assets you have and you know the reward or the sin expected out of reaching you know the level of extravagance. Definitely, uh, you know, for us as Muslim, extravagance is is all the way prohibited. A Muslim should not you know consume or have more than what he needs. However, the fact that a person is extravagant does not mean that you know the extra 
uh, assets he has is subject to zakah. There is a difference between between the two. Domestic animals and poultry. In this specific category, actually, regardless of the intention of the person, if if you did not constitute the minimum amount required for this specific kind of 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 of, 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 of domestic animals, then whatever you have is not subject to zakah. Like for example, if someone has up to 29 cows, regardless of the intention of having these cows, whether for personal or commercial or, or, or family use, it does not make any difference. The cows themselves are not subject to zakah. Why? Because he or she did not constitute the minimum amount, which is which is 30 cows. However, this does not mean that the dairy products out of using, you know, these cows are not subject to zakah. Two different points. I'm talking now about the cows themselves, about, about the, you know, the domestic animals. The same rule with the sheep or the goat. If someone does not have a, min a minimum of 40 goats or, or sheep, then whatever he has or she has is not subject to zakah. However, if he makes money out of, out of Selling or trading in the dairy product out of having these, these sheep, then whatever he has is subject to zakah. Poultry, actually, according to the Sunnah, uh, you know, it, uh, you know, it is, it is not. Uh, I mean, it is unlimited. We do not have a specific amount have been mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet Anything for your personal, you know, use, like for example, if you have a horse or more than one horse, they are not subject. They are not subject to uh, zakah. Among the non-zakatable wealth is the personal you know, tools or devices that you might use. Um, the furniture in your house, the laptop, the desktop, the security system, the, you know, the, the fax machine that you use in your, whatever you use for your personal or for your business use is not subject to zakah because you know, all these assets are not, are not for trading or for selling or for buying, they are for your you know, personal use. According to the hadith of the Prophet laid on al-Muslim fi he was indicating, you know, some items that that a Muslim usually use for his personal use. Anything, you know, uh, uh, for the personal use would take the same rule, and it is not subject to zakah. How about the agricultural land itself? I mean, if the if the crops or the the, the, the agricultural products are subject to zakah, it does not necessarily mean that the land itself is subject to zakah. Actually, it is not. It is not subject to zakah. Property in public trust, or for the general public. What if we have a message like this message, maybe worth about uh, one million dollars? It does not have any individual owner. This message actually is, 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 is you know, um, Islamically owned by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And the message Allah is not owned by anyone. And legally speaking, it's owned, you know, by the Muslim community, or it is, uh, it's under the native authority, or whatever it is. So there is no, there is no individuals individuals who own this property. So this is why it's not subject to zakah. Even if the bank account of the, of the, of the masjid you know, has, has thousands of dollars, there is no zakah it should be paid because again, there is no an individual who owns this money. You know, this money in the, in the bank account is designated for the, you know, for the operation expenses and to pay you know, uh, for the poor people and you know, to cover the expenses of the, of the masjid. So there is no zakah required to be paid. It's the same for, for, for hospitals, for schools, for orphanages, as long as they are owned by the public. But what if, what if uh, for example, a group of doctors, okay, who established a, a business, and this business actually is a is a hospital. It is it is a private business. In this case, actually, the hospital itself, all the equipment, all the the properties belong to this business are not subject to zakah. But how about the millions of dollars that they make every year out of using, you know, or, or out of having this business? Definitely the money that they make out of having this business is, is subject to zakah. And this kind of wealth, we call it exploited assets because they use the instruments and the materials in the hospital. They use their experience you know, uh, uh, and their licenses in generating money. So whatever they make out of having this hospital is subject to zakah, while the hospital itself, the property and the equipment and the furniture is not subject to zakah. Designated properties for endowments. Some of the Islamic you know, uh, organizations here in the U.S. and, uh, and abroad, they have waqf. Waqf means endowment. A piece of land, a property, uh, apartment complex, uh, you know, uh, um, rental houses, 
in which the you know the the, the revenue or the money generated out of having these endowments is you know designated to cover the expenses of this Islamic work or Islamic organization. The waqf itself, the endowment, is not subject to zakah. The money generated from this waqf is also not subject to zakah because it does not have an individual who owns this money. It is designated only to serve the Muslim community or to serve a, or to serve a, the, the you know this specific Islamic organization. So whatever whatever they have is not subject to uh, zakah. Unlawful wealth. Allah forbids if a, if a Muslim has generated some interest, you know, uh, um, income, uh, stolen property, anything has been generated out of uh, extortion, bribery, you know, uh, monopoly, cheating, fraud, whatever it is, is not zakatable. Because actually the only way to filter out the filth that has been generated by this Muslim is to get rid of the money in full. There is no way. And as zakatu, لا تطهر المال الحرام. Bottom line. So this is why I said here, such wealth must be returned in full to its lawful owner. If, it, if, if that you know possible, if it's not possible, then it is to be given away to the poor in its entirety. Zakat al mal la tutahiru al mal al haram. كل مال أو كل لحم نبتة من 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 حرام فالنار أولى به كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. Now what are the conditions that we should consider for the person to be subject to uh, paying his zakat. Zakat conditions, the person must be a Muslim, because according to our scholars, غير المسلمين غير مخاطبين بفروع الشريعة. And you should not ask non-Muslim community around to pay their zakat, because basically they are not Muslims. They have to embrace Islam, accept Islam, and then after that, they should, you know, perform or fulfill the requirements of being a Muslim. So he has to be a Muslim. He has to reach the minimum threshold or an nisab or the minimum amount should, you know, should be uh, possessed by a person to, you know, pay the zakah from this uh, amount. The passage or the passing of one lunar year, al uh, hawl, mururu al hawl. Why we why we say the lunar year and not the solar one? Because actually all the zakah, I mean all the rules in, in, in Islam are affiliated and connected with the lunar year, not with the solar one. Like for example, in fasting in the month of Ramadan, performing al-hajj, zakat al-mal, I mean anything related to the, you know, calculation in Islam, I, I mean the calendar in Islam should be, you know, uh, uh, connected with the lunar year, not with the, not with the solar one. Adulthood and puberty and orphanage has nothing to do at all with the zakat ability of the person for a very simple reason zakat al-mal actually is a financial responsibility or financial worship or financial duty it has nothing to do with the person it's not like for example uh, performing al-hajj al-hajj actually is a is a physical worship performing the salah or doing you know uh, uh, praying you know the regular salawat that we do on, uh, every day it's a physical worship but when it comes to zakat al-mal actually it is a financial one so if we have an insane person or a minor one or a, 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 you know um, anybody else who cannot take care of his zakah then his guardian the one who's taking care of you know of him or her should pay zakat al-mal on his behalf now how about the zakat ability for the wealth or the conditions have to be you know uh, fulfilled for the wealth itself to be subject to zakah the first one is what we call it exclusive ownership what means that the property or the wealth or the asset has to be exclusively owned by one person if it is jointly owned by different people and you know the total amount or the is subject to zakah as an example the 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 the, the Special, for example, for paying zakah on the on the goats, as we just you know mentioned now, is forty. What if we have forty goats, for example, are jointly owned by by two brothers? Okay, zakah actually is not required to be paid. What if two, what if two, you know two persons own jointly seventeen hundred dollars, which is which is the special for zakah to mal itself? They jointly own this amount of money. None of them actually is subject to zakah because none of them own the threshold or the minimum amount required to you know to pay the cattle mat. So the anisab or the minimum amount or the minimum yeah the minimum amount should be owned by only one person. In order
order for this money to be subject to zakah. The second stipulation is what we call it ability of growth, actually or potentially. This is why your car is not is not subject to zakah because I mean your personal car that you use for your you know personal transportation is not is not subject to zakah. Your house that you use for residential purposes is not subject to zakah because you do not make any money out of it. However, if you change your mind and put a sign for rent or for sale, starting that date actually your house will be will be subject to zakah because your intention have been have been changed. So this is what we mean by by ability of growth, actually or potentially. This is why your 401k plan, for example, is subject to zakah because it is under investment. You are making money sometimes on daily basis out of having this 401k plan. So this is why it is it is subject to zakah. Passage of one lunar year, what you call it, you know, أو دوران الحول. You should not pay your zakat for more than one time per year. And when we say year, we mean the lunar one, not the solar one. السنة القمرية وليس السنة الشمسية. Accessibility to the wealth. يعني ملك ملك النصاب رقبة ويدا. What means that the asset has to be exclusively owned by you. At the same time, you should have full access to the money or to the assets or to, or to the wealth in order for you, you know, uh, to be required to pay zakat al mal. This is why some people get confused when it comes to calculating uh, um, their 401k plan, for example, or their, uh, you know, annuity or stocks or the debt that they they have. How to, you know, how to pay zakat al mal? How it comes that they should pay zakat al mal while they do not have full access? You know, to that, to that money. Inshallah, I will, I will cover it. You know, with with more details when we reach this point. So, briefly speaking, if you wanna know the wealth versus the nisab versus the zakah, briefly, if you have a personal wealth with the minimum of three U.S. ounces pure gold, then you have to pay 2.5 percent as zakat al The same for your business wealth. The same for your tradable uh, goods or trading. You know, trading merchandise that you have in your store. As long as you have a minimum of, uh, uh, I mean, if the market value is a minimum of three uh, U.S. ounces pure gold, then you have to pay the cat on uh, uh, 2.5 uh, the cat rate. The same for the exploited assets. The, the same for the agricultural products. If you have an irrigated or non-irrigated, both of them actually are subject to the. The approximate approximate nisab, which is khamsa to awsuf in the hadith of the Prophet is nowadays, you know, equivalent to 14.39 pounds. So whomever have, have have you know crops of a minimum of 14.39 pounds, then whatever he or she has is subject to uh, zakah. It should be 5% if it is an irrigated. It should be 10% if it is non-irrigated uh, agriculture product. Livestock, a minimum of uh, uh, 40 for uh, ovine, like uh, you know, sheep or goat. A minimum of 30 for the you know bovine uh, livestock, like you know, buffaloes and, and, and cows. If anyone has a treasure trove, which is a, a rikaz, then it has to be uh, paid based uh, based on 20% zakat rate, and the minimum the minimum nisab is, as I said, three U.S. ounces of pure gold. You know, those are you know quickly or briefly. The uh, zakatable wealth and the nisab and the uh, zakat should be paid. What do you mean by threshold versus poverty line? Poverty line actually is uh, the minimum stand standard of of living. What means that, according to the <coughs> IRS and some other, you know, governmental institutions here. If you, if you, if you are under the poverty line, then you are eligible to get some governmental assistance, like for example, Medicaid or Medicare or uh, um, um, scholarship sometimes or food stamp or welfare, whatever it is. If you are above the poverty line, then you are not eligible, you know, for all these uh, kinds of uh, governmental assistance. What does the poverty line has to do with the with the threshold or with the with the nisab. And nisab actually is something else. And nisab is the minimum amount or minimum value of a specific asset. If you if you possess it, then this kind of asset is subject to zakah, regardless 
regardless of the poverty line. And I will, uh, I will give you just you know, some examples to make, it, to make it clear. You might be under the poverty line. What means, from a governmental point of view, you are eligible to receive some governmental assistance. However, at the same time, you have some kinds of wealth in which you, you know, the wealth that you have or the assets you have are subject to zakah. What if someone does, you know, does not make more than, uh, more than, more than forty thousand dollars per year, okay, and and he has four or five households. Definitely, by default, he is under the poverty line. But if this specific person has forty goats, are the forty goats that he, you know, he, he has subject to zakah or not? If he's subject to zakah. This is just to make it clear that there is a big difference between, you know, having a nisab or the threshold versus the poverty line. Now, on the other hand. What if you are a medical doctor? You make a minimum of uh, of, of two hundred thousand dollars per year. Definitely, by default, you are above the poverty line, right? But what if you have two or three, you know, college students, and none of them have a scholarship, and you barely could cover their expenses and pay their tuition fees? Actually, you can take from the cattle mail if you cannot cover their expenses. Even though, or yet, you are still, you know, above the poverty line. So there is a big difference between the two, and we should not, you know, confuse, confuse ourselves. And nisab is a religious standard to determine whether or not the wealth that you have is subject to zakah, while the poverty line is a tax or governmental, you know, uh, measure shows the eligibility of, the, of a specific person to receive some governmental assistance. There is no connection, there is no affiliation between the two at all. Connecting zakah with the, with the poverty line actually is a mixing between zakah and you know governmental taxes, and we said this you know from the beginning that they should not be you know mixed to together. Combining assets to reach nisab. What if someone, let's say for example that the that the the, the threshold or the nisab for the cash money nowadays is seventeen hundred, which is approximately seventeen hundred. What if someone has only Five hundred dollars. At the same time, he has some jewelry for his wife, you know, worth uh, five hundred dollars. At the same time, he has five or ten goats. Should he, you know, gather all these assets at the same time to constitute himself or not? Actually, he should not, because because you know all the rules have been mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet talking about reaching and nisab, specifying a specific kind of assets. I mean, if you have a minimum of 30 cows, then the 30 cows are subject to zakah. If you have a minimum of 85 grams of gold, then the money that you have is subject to zakah. If you have, uh, um, you know, uh, 1439 pounds of any products, uh, agricultural products, then this, you know, whatever you have is subject to zakah. However, you don't have to. You don't have to, you know, uh, uh, combine or together all the uh, different kinds of wealth in order for you to constitute any sub and to pay the cattle mail, you don't have to. If you want to, that's fine. But you know, you know, uh, do you have to, you know, gather all these different or combine all these different kinds of assets to pay the cattle mail? Actually, you don't. You don't have to. What if you have money, but in in, in, in different ways? Like for example, you have uh, you have few hundred dollars in your checking account, few hundred dollars in your pocket, and you have some stocks in the stock market. If you if you calculate or do just a simple math to you know see how much you have uh, the, the 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 total amount let's say for example you know is more than seventeen hundred should you pay the cattle mail on what we have yes definitely you have to pay the cattle mail because all of them actually I mean I mean I mean even even if some of the money is in the in the bank some of them in your pocket some of them you know uh, are via stocks in the in the stock market but at the end of the day. They are cash money. I mean, you can cash the stocks by selling them at any time. In this case, since they belong to the same category, then you have to, you know, combine all of them and see, you know, how is the total, and then you pay the cattle mail based on the total that you calculated. Consistency of of, of possessing the threshold. Honestly, this this point is is the 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 the, the disputable or debatable. Points between our different madhab, madhab Abu Hanifa versus Malik versus Imam Shafi versus uh, Imam Ahmad, رضي الله عنهم أجمعين. 
what I strongly believe is that you don't have you don't have to have the nisab or the threshold during the whole year because practically speaking it's almost impossible to do so you cannot have you know a nisab from the beginning during the whole year until the end of the of the fiscal lunar year as long as you as long as you constitute a nisab in the beginning and you still have a nisab in the uh, in the end of the fiscal lunar year then whatever you have is subject to zakah especially if you work as a businessman sometimes you run out of cash you know literally out of cash and maybe just within a few days you might you might get thousands maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars and then after a few days you run out of cash and so on this is you know the nature of, of the business you, you you buy you trade you sell you get a lot of money and you run out of money and so on and so forth so if we ask every single person to, to keep the nisab or the threshold during the whole year it means that you know no one will be subject to zakah at all so there is no need for you to you know have the uh, nisab during the whole year it's more than enough to have it in the beginning and in the year of the fiscal lunar year in order for your, your money to be subject to uh, subject to zakah Zakatable money is what you have at the zakat due date, regardless of the fluctuated position during the year. This is, wallahu alam, the most sound and the most practical, you know, opinion to be implemented nowadays. How about the the professionals, muwaffin? <coughs> And those who provide services, those who work for their own, like uh, medical doctors, like engineers, like accountants, sometimes who just generate money uh, on weekly, sometimes on on daily basis. How to calculate this zakat? If we think that every single dollar that I generate has to stay in my position for one complete year. This means that 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 I have to spend, you know, my my whole life calculating how many dollars I generated today and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and wait for one complete year. So it means that I will have 365 hawl in there, which is, which is something actually is uh, you know impossible to be to be implemented. Now a very simple and straightforward calculation: you should not pay the cattle mail during the year. Actually, your hawl starts since the date that you constitute any stop. Like nowadays, for example, well, the nisab for the cattle mail, by the way, is 85 grams. And I think, Allah alam, you know, the market value of the of the of of, of the gold of the gram of gold, let's say, for example, is 20 dollars. So 85 times 20 equals 1700, roughly speaking. Anyone who has 1700 dollars, those 1700 dollars are subject to zakah if all the conditions and, and stipulations for the cattle mail are fulfilled. So let's say, for example, that. You know, uh, a, a, a medical doctor who has his own business, his, you know, his own office. He keeps generating money during the whole year. In one day, five hundred dollars. In the next day, zero dollars. In the third day, he did the surgery and he got five thousand dollars, and so on and so forth. He does not have to worry about how many money he made during the year. The only thing he has to worry about is what day, what day, he constitutes the nisab. Let's say, for example, the beginning of uh, the month of uh, Rajab. Okay, in the next year, the beginning of Rajab, he has to calculate exactly dollar by dollar how many money he has. He is, uh, you know, in, in his position today. Let's say, for example, uh, seventeen thousand uh, dollars. Okay, after deducting all the, you know, the, the the expenses and the utility bills and whatever he has to pay at that month, and then the rest or the net of the money is subject to the like, as simple as explicit as is, regardless of the. Of the of, of the of the money that he makes during the during the, the year. The care is not due on the flow in, uh, of, of income itself during the year. As I said, you just you just you know uh, I mean you have to you know make sure that that this specific day is the beginning of my haul, okay, the fiscal lunar year. In the next year. In the same day, whatever I have at that time, after deducting all the expenses and utility bills and whatever I have to pay, then you know the the, the net amount that I have is subject to subject to uh, zakah. Mm. How about the jewelry and ornaments? 
first of all, we need to define what does jewelry mean. Does it have to be only gold and silver, as it was during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, or whatever is well known for the community as a jewelry or something very, very precious and valuable should be considered as a jewelry. Actually, everything considered nowadays as a jewelry for, for women, then it is a jewelry. And it is subject you know, to the rules of, of zakah. Anything made of gold, silver, like what, you know, uh, uh, what people used to have during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, diamonds. Nowadays, minerals, precious stones, uh, gems, whatever is considered as a jewelry, then it should be taken as a jewelry is, is, is considered as a jewelry. Now, do we have to pay the cattle man of the jewelry as long as it is only and only for our personal use and there is no commercial purposes of having this jewelry? Actually, to the best of my knowledge, according to the most correct opinion of our scholars, is that whatever is used for the personal use by our sisters, by our wives, by our daughters, is not subject to zakah at all. Because it takes the same rule of the house that you live in, it takes the same rule of the car that you drive every day, it takes the same rule of the furniture in your house, and so on and so, on and so forth. It's only and only for your personal, or for your wife's personal use, so this is why it is not subject to zakah. There is a big difference between a taqwa, and the fatwa, if you want to keep yourself in the safe side and pay the cat man and the jail of your wife every year, that will be fine. If you want to pay it, you know, once, uh, only when you, when you buy some jewelry, that will be fine. But, you know, as far as al-fiqh, as far as what you have to pay, you know, there is no need to pay, you know, any zakah on the jewelry. As long as two conditions are satisfied. The first one, it has to be only for the personal use. So there is no commercial purposes behind buying, you know, those 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 jewelry. Second of all, it has to be within within the average. And and um, how to determine the average? It, it it differs from one society to another society. It differs from one family to another. Let's say, for example, here in the U.S., if the average Muslim woman has up to twenty thousand dollars jewelry, okay, and we found out that our sister has one hundred thousand, we should say, okay, wait a minute. Up to twenty thousand dollars is the average of the other, you know, fellows or other sisters here in the society. The first twenty thousand is not subject to zakah because it makes a lot of sense that you have bought all these jewelry only for your personal use. However, the rest of the jewelry that you have are, are subject to zakah because you went beyond the average of other Muslim women in this society. The average for the Muslim women in the U.S. is definitely different than the Muslim women in, in, in Africa, in Jordan, in, in Pakistan, in Saudi Arabia, it depends on the society and the level of, of luxury that people, you know, live in the, in the society. We should ask people what is the average, I mean, uh, jewelry that Muslim women, you know, have here in this society, and then based on that, we determine, you know, uh, whether uh, the rest of the jewelry are subject to zakah or, or not. There is something else that we need to consider. Some people actually, they say outwardly that, that they buy jewelry only for personal use. But for, between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have different intention. They want to protect their money against the inflation. And this is why they keep, you know, buying gold, gold jewelry. If, if the intention is to protect the money against the inflation, then whatever has been bought is subject to zakat. I mean, even, even if it is just jewelry, um, you know, it's something between you, between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, no one one can go through your heart and determine what kind of intention you or your or your wife you know has when 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 you bought this jewelry. But you know you know this is the rule. If the intention is to is to protect the money against the inflation, then whatever whatever had been bought for this purpose is subject to zakah because it is not for the personal use. If it is not for the, I mean, if it is not for the person use, then it has to, uh, you know, I mean, it is, it is subject to, it is subject to zakah. Okay, next session, inshallah, we will talk about the retirement fund. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad alaihi wasallam. Sahbihi ajma'in. Hey, no, leave us. Okay, if you, uh, 
أقول لهم يودوه يعني على على النفس pay the capital mail on my retirement fund or, fund or not. The people actually, uh, I mean, the reason why this, this, you know, this question has been asked many times is that there is a confusion regarding one of the, one of the conditions or stipulations for the, for the decatability of the, of the wealth versus, you know, uh, another condition. There is an, an out, you know, an outward contradiction between the two. Some people think that since I do not have an access or I do not have a full position over my 401k plan or any retirement fund, then I should not pay it the cat. Now, on the other hand, actually, when we, when, we, when we remember that this money is under investment sometimes on daily basis and we are making money, we are making hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars out of having the retirement fund, then how comes that we should not pay the cat and on it? So there is actually a, a, a resolution for this problem. We do believe that if you do not have an access, a full access to the money, then you should not pay it zakat. But who said that you do not have an access to your 401k plan or for any other retirement fund? When it comes to your 401k, you do have an access. I mean, you can, if you, if you choose to withdraw before the due date, before the uh, Allah forbids, you know, disability or death or reaching the age of, of, of retirement, you can have an access up to maybe 50% of the, of the amount. However, if you choose to do so, you might be penalized or charge a tax or, 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 or penalty. So since the money is under investment and, you know, the money is growing on an annual, on a monthly basis, then we have to pay the capital mark. How to calculate it? There's, you know, this is the, you know, the, 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 the formula that we should, you know, uh, calculate the cattle and mail based on the withdrawable amount. You don't have to draw it physically. Whatever you have an access to is subject to the cat. Withdrawable amount minus prescribed penalty minus prescribed tax equals the zakatable amount. As an example, if today is your zakat due date, okay, and the total amount that you have in your 401k plan or annuity or whatever it is is uh, is eighty thousand dollars. Okay, and you do have an access to up to 50%. So you, you have an access to $40,000. If you choose, if you, you don't have to, but if you choose to withdraw the $40,000, which is 50% of the total amount you have, you will be penalized $2,000. You will be uh, taxed $3,000. So the, the, the formula here is 40000 minus 2 minus 3 equals 75 as simple as 75,000 times 2.5 is your, is your zakat. I think, you know, this, this formula is fair enough for, for everybody because, uh, again, the, the money that you have is growable. It grows actually on, on, a, on a weekly, on a monthly basis. So it doesn't make any sense to keep waiting until the age of retirement, until Allah forbids the time of death or disability to pay the capital money. You do have to pay the capital. If you do not have cash money or enough money to pay your annual zakat on this retirement, it's a different different story. But you know, is this money zakatable or not? Yes, it is zakatable based on this very basic and simple formula. The same rule applies for the 401k, for the IRA, for the Roth IRA, for the CD or the certificate of deposit, whatever is considered as a retirement fund, whatever fund you have. Even if you do not have a full access to it, then it's still, you know, subject to the care based on this, you know, uh, formula. The withdrawable amount minus prescribed penalty minus prescribed tax. If there is any other charge, it should be deducted from the uh, total, and then the net is subject to the care based on 2.5, you know, the cat, the cat rate. How about? How about the stocks and the shares and, and the bonds that that y you might have? Well, first of all, we need to define what, what, what does a stock mean versus bond. 
Stack actually is, uh, 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 is something represents an ownership of a certain part of the capital of a corporation. Like, for example, if the if the capital of uh, of Walmart is one million, just say one million dollars, okay, and you hold you hold uh, you hold five stocks, five uh, uh, five stocks, one dollar for each stock. It means that you own from the Walmart five dollars out of one million. So you are one of the shareholders. It means that you are one of the owners of this corporation or this company or this business. Now, as long as the core business of the corporation that you hold its its, its stocks, you know, is a halal business, then a Muslim is allowed to, you know, uh, be a, a, a shareholder uh, and to own uh, or to trade in the stocks of this of this of this company. So stocks and shares actually are are the same. However, it's not the case when it comes to bonds. Bonds actually is is a different story. Bond actually means a loan, and unfortunately, it is an interest bearing loan. When you hold a bond. It means that you did lend to the government a specific amount of money, and you know the amount that you lend it to the government is guaranteed. Plus, extra money will be paid, you know, in the top of this amount, which is you know uh, one of the most explicit examples of riba have been conducted now nowadays. So basically, basically, a Muslim is not allowed actually to you know to trade in bonds. He is allowed to you know trade in stocks and shares as long as the core business of the companies that he hold there. Stocks is is a halal is a halal business. Now people might might have stocks for two different. I mean there are two different possibilities, two different scenarios of of holding the stocks. Some people actually are interested in holding the stocks on a long time long term basis what means that they are not you know interested in selling and buying the you know the stocks they would like to keep the ownership or the position of the of the stock and they you know the only thing they are waiting for is just the real profit that they make out of holding these stocks now if this is the case and you know your intention is to hold the stocks for a long term uh, a long time then the stocks that you have should take the same role of the exploited assets what means that the market value or the wholesale market value of the stocks that you have are not subject to zakat. The only zakatable amount is the revenue or the money or the profit that you made out of holding these stocks. Say for example that the wholesale market value of the stocks that you have in the zakat due date is ten thousand dollars. And you already made you already made two thousand out of holding these stocks. Then the zakatable amount is the only two thousand while the ten uh, yes, the only two thousand while the ten thousand are not subject to zakat. Why? Because the stocks that you have are considered as an exploited asset. They are exactly like the taxi cab that you use. They are exactly like the laboratory that you use, and and the, you know the rental property or the rental apartment complex, and so on and so forth. So the the, the zakat is only on the revenue or the money or the profit that you make. Now this is one scenario. The other scenario is that some people are really interested in trading in the stocks themselves, speculating. So Speculation sometimes they call it in English al I mean you keep waiting for the market value. When when it goes up, you you, you I mean you sell. When it, when it goes down, it keeps you know it keeps fluctuating. When it goes down, you buy and so on and so forth. If this is the intention behind holding these stocks, then the wholesale market value of the stocks you have are subject to the cap. In our example, that ten thousand, the wholesale market value. 2,000 the profit. In this case, I mean, if you if you if you if you hold them for you know uh, trading purposes, then the whole 12,000 dollars are subject to zakat. So actually, it, you know, it makes a big difference. And the difference actually is made based on what? Based on the intention that you have. What was your intention? You know, uh, behind holding these stocks. Based on your intention, you can uh, calculate your your zakat. In some companies, not not not, not always. Like for example, in Saudi Arabia, some companies actually by law they have to pay the zakat. Of the capital of the company and the profit of the company itself, regardless of how many how many you know business partners we have, how many I mean the 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 zakat for the whole business has to be paid. It's exactly here in the U.S. when the when when any corporation. Which has an uh, EIN uh, employment 
uh, identification number. You have to pay the cattleman on the on the company on the on the cor on the corporation itself. It's exactly the same example in Saudi Arabia and some other you know Muslim countries in which paying the cattleman is an obligation and upon the company itself, not upon the you know owners of the of the company. My point here is that the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, لا تنيا في الصدقة. There is no duplication in paying the cattleman. So if your money, if the if, if the stocks that you hold in this company have been already uh, I mean the zakat of these stocks have been already paid, you know, don't have to pay the cattleman one more time when you get your dividends, you know, at, uh, at the end of the of the of the of the fiscal lunar year because you know uh, they have been paid already because of the hadith la tanya There is no duplication in paying the cattleman. If it is paid by the company then you know you are free, you don't have to pay its zakat one more time. How about bond zakat? As I said, bond means an interest-bearing loan, and whatever Muslim, whatever a Muslim could generate or already generated out of uh, out of trading in these bonds is 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 a haram and explicit prohibited money in which he has or she has to get rid of this money, you know, in full in, in, in its entirety by paying it for any beneficial projects for the Muslim community in his in his area. But the question here. How about the capital itself? How about the loan itself? I'm not talking about the interest of the loan. I'm talking about the loan itself. Is it the capital or not? Yes, it is the capital. Once you get your money back from the from the government, then the original amount that you lend it to the government is subject to the care. You have to pay it the care. While the interest has to be, you know, getting rid of, as I said in the in the beginning. The care to adain loan the care. Well, this is one of the one of the points in which, to the best of my knowledge, we do not have any authentic hadith from the Prophet ﷺ addressing you know addressing this point. Hal fi daini zakah? Who is who is responsible to pay you know the zakah? Of the of the of the loan, is it the borrower or is it the lender? As I said, you know it's it's one of the one of the you know debatable points between between the different madhahib in al fiqh al islami because there is no specific hadith in addressing and covering this point. Now, for the lender, the one who advanced the money, to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my knowledge, he is not subject to zakah because he does not have an access to this money. What if the borrower, did, which is which is you know you know most probably the case, especially when 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 Muslims deal with each other, most probably the case. You know the borrower will not pay in him back. So is it is it reasonable to ask the lender to pay the cattle mail on a money in which he does not possess any more actually? Uh, you know it's not it's not fair it's not reasonable. So for the lender, the one who advanced the money, this money is not the cattle. He should wait until he gets his money back, and then after that, after waiting one complete fiscal lunar year, the cat due date, then he should pay the cattle mail. Yes, he does have the money. But at the same time, he does not have an access to it, and there is a good possibility that this money will never ever be paid back to him. So he should wait till he gets his money, wait for one complete year, and then after that, he should pay the cash back. Now, this is for the lender, for al al muqrib. How about the borrower himself, the one who took the money? Is it his money or not? Up to certain limit, yes, it is his money. Up to certain limit, it's not his money because he has to pay it back. If we say that that he is not responsible to pay the cash and this money, then the question here. Who is responsible if the lender does not pay and the borrower does not pay? I mean, I mean, you know, how it comes that that we have ten thousand dollars have been have been transferred from one person to another and no one is responsible for this guy? So we have to charge, you know, somebody at the end of the day. Who is who is responsible for this money? Actually, he is the borrower. Although he has to pay this amount in full back to the lender, but you know, since he possesses the money, actually, it is it is his money. I mean, he can use it for. Uh, Commercial purposes, you know, uh, purposes for business purposes, uh, you know, uh, purposes for uh, purchasing anything. It, it's it's his money. As long as he possesses the money, then he is the right person to, you know, pay the cattleman, even though he is in debt, because you know this debt is not due at the zakat due date. He might, you know, pay it back, you know, after after a few months, sometimes after a few years. So actually, he should pay the cattleman on the on on the loan that he, you know, he borrowed from. Uh, other people. How about the mortgage and the car loan? The only deductible debts are the due ones. Well, 
before that actually we need to differentiate we need to differentiate between the the permissibility of any transaction and what I call it the zakatability of the of the money. What means that if we agree and actually this is the reality, this is the truth, that buying a house via conventional mortgage process is prohibited because this is one of the you know interest interest bearing transactions that Islam actually prohibited, you know, among Muslims to be a part of. However, when we say that buying a house via conventional mortgage is prohibited, it doesn't mean that we should double punishing the one who is involved in such a transaction by preventing him from deducting the money that he has to pay for the mortgage company by saying no, this transaction is haram, then even the $1,200 that you pay every month are not to be deducted from your net. Actually, they have to be deducted because then, you know, there, there is no connection between, between the zakatability and the permissibility of the, you know, of, the, of, the, of the transaction. Say, for example, that someone is already involved in buying a house and he has to pay fifteen hundred dollars per month. Okay? At the zakat due date, he has at that date uh, fifty thousand dollars. And there is fifteen hundred dollars are due to be paid at the same month. Should he deduct the fifteen hundred or not, he should deduct them. Regardless of his status in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I'm talking about the deductibility of, you know, this mortgage payment. Should it be deducted or not? It should be deducted because again there is no connection between the permissibility of the transaction that he did long time ago with the mortgage company and the zakatability of the money. The same rule applies for the car loans. If he already you know bought a car or he has a you know a monthly payment for his furniture, for his car, for his house, whatever it is actually, everything he has to pay at the month of the zakat due date is zakat deductible. It has to be taken away from the you know the the the, 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 the total amount that he has and then the rest or the net of the amount is subject to zakah, while the, his monthly payment for the mortgage for the car loan is uh, not subject to not, not subject to zakah. Here is the answer for the question that one of our brothers here uh, asked. How to determine the, the value of the assets? You have a business, for example. You have uh, more than one piece of land, you have a, you know, a car dealership, and you know, the question how to determine the market value of the, of the assets you have in order for you to be able to calculate your, your zakah. Here is the rule. Zakah is to be calculated based on the whole sale market value of the asset at the zakat due date. What does that mean? Let's say, for example, that you are a car dealer. Car dealer. And in your lot, you have 20 cars at the zakat due date. Okay? You already bought those 20 cars, say, for example, for only $200,000 six months ago. Okay? And the market value of the cars, if you want to sell them, you know, uh, retail, the market value is $300,000, just say. Okay? So we have 200, the exact amount that you paid to buy these cars, and if you want to sell them to your customers on a, on a retail basis, okay, you might generate today $300,000. Now, which one actually is, is the capital, the 200 or the 300? Before you answer this question, we need to consider something else. We need to consider something else. If you do not possess those cars on the zakat due date, and you want to buy them from the you know whole, uh, wholesale car dealership. At that date, you are willing, you are willing to pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy all these twenty cars. So we have two hundred, two hundred fifty, and three hundred thousand dollars. Which which one of those three different amounts is subject to zakah? Is it the amount that you already bought the cars, or it is the wholesale market value? Of the, of the cars, or the exact amount that you paid, I, I mean, to buy these cars, which one? Actually, it's only and only the $250,000. This is what we mean by the whole sale market value. Another example. Well, the question here, why we should not pay the cat and mail on the, on the only 200? Because actually the market value of the cars, let's wait, it might go, it might, it you know, goes up, it might, uh, it might go down. So whatever you paid, you know, six months ago is not the real market value of the 20 cars that you have today in your lot, in your, in your business. 
Why shouldn't you pay zakat based on the three hundred thousand dollars? Because you might sell the car today, you might not. So it's not you know it's it's not fair to charge you uh, the zakat on three hundred thousand while you did not pay the cars yet. So it's fair enough to say that if you do not possess all these twenty cars today, how much you are willing to pay? Okay, for the wholesale market, uh, I mean for the wholesale car dealership to buy these cars today. Is it 250? Then this is the exact amount subject to zakat. Another example: What if we have a businessman who works on 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 on, uh, on candy, for example? Okay, he has bought already candy worth 100,000. Okay, and during the zakat due date, the whole candy that he has at the day were expired. So the market the value of the candy that he has at the day is, is zero. If you want to charge him 100,000, it's not fair. Because if, he, if, if you want to sell the candy that he has at the zakat due date, he will get zero dollars. So 100,000 is not fair. Okay? And uh, the only thing he has to pay today for the candy that he has is zero because actually practically speaking, you know, realistically speaking, he has nothing. Because all the candy that he has, you know, are expired and they worth nothing. So this is you know, just to make it, you know, clear what is the difference between the, between the, the you know, uh, the, the the wholesale market value. It means it means the amount that you are willing, it means the amount that you are willing to pay to possess or to buy the properties or the merchandise that you have in your in your store this, uh, in your store. this is the this is the most fair and just way to determine the value of the assets that that you that you have during the zakat duty what if the zakat was not computed or calculated and the market value had been increased or decreased if your zakat was due 5 days ago and it was uh, $5000 and because of some reasons okay the market value of the assets or the merchandise that you have had been increased and based on the increase of the market value your zakat became 6,000 should you pay 5,000 or 6,000 you should pay only the 5,000 and not the 6 because you know whatever whatever is determined during the zakat due date is what you owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of the, of the fluctu fluctuation of the market value of the assets that you, that you have Agricultural products, according to the uh, school of thought of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, that everything that the land produces that can be eaten and stored is zakatable. And he supported his Jewish school by the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, anfiqu min, min tayyibati ma kasabtum, wa mimma akhrajna lakum al ard. Whatever, whatever, you know, whatever, Whatever you know, uh, agricultural products, whatever crops that you have, is subject to zakah according to this understanding and the school of thought of Imam Abu Hanifa, radiyallahu an. And actually, this is you know the fair and the just madhhab to be implemented nowadays, because actually people sometimes make millions of dollars out of trading in fruits. And according to Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, all the fruits are exempted from the zakah. It doesn't make any sense if someone you know has uh, you know uh, um, uh, apple or, or orange, okay, and he makes millions of dollars. And he should not pay zakat al mal according to Imam Shafi. Actually, he should be charged zakat al mal according to Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. As you said in the beginning, that an nisab or the minimum threshold that he should have is 647 kilograms, which is the equivalent of five awsuq, khamsa to awsuq according to the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Laysa fima duna khamsa ti awsuq sadaqa. This is the minimum. It is equivalent to 1349 maybe pounds plus or or, 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 or minus. Now the products or the output from irrigated land, as long as the irrigation actually causes money for the uh, you know for the labor for the uh, I mean for the irrigation itself, then the 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 zakat rate is only five percent on the net value. Let's say, for example, that you know the wholesale market value of the crops or the agricultural products are 100,000, okay, uh, and and the irrigation itself, the labor, the other expenses and operation expenses, it costs 10,000. Then it's a very simple calculation: 100,000 minus 10 equals 90,000 dollars times times 5 percent, and you know this is the zakat that he should should pay. 
Now, on the contrary, if it is a non-irrigated land, I mean, he did, he, he did not pay any real, okay, or, or valuable expenses to, I mean, to have the agricultural products, then he should pay 10% on the total, not on the net. 5% from the net is almost, almost equivalent to the 10% of the, of the total. So it's fair enough whether it is irrigated or non, you know, non-irrigated to pay 5% of the irrigated and 10% of the non-irrigated from the gross value, not from the net value. As we said before, no zakah is due on the agricultural land itself. Again, because of the hadith, لا ثانية في الصدق. You should not pay the cattle man on the land and on the agricultural products on the land you know, at, at the same time. It's either or, either on the land and, or, or on the agricultural products themselves. Quickly, uh, livestock, I mean, th this is the zakah required for the uh, 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 ovine livestock, like sheep or lamb or goat. Uh, up to 39, up to 39, there is no zakah, and then it goes you know, according to this. You know, a, a schedule from 40 to 120, it's only one sheep or one lamb or one goat from 121 to 200 to, uh, to 303, up to 404, and, and so on and so forth. When it comes to bovine cows and buffaloes, this is the schedule. Up to 29 is, uh, is out of the cat. There is no the cat required to be paid from 30 to 39, one yearling, and so on and so forth. The camels, you know. Uh, the same up to, I mean, uh, li less than five are not subject to zakah, and no one is, is interested even to know the, <laughs> know the zakah and camels simply because we do not have camels in the U.S. Unless if you are in Arizona, I think there, there are some camels, right? American camels. Right. How about the zakat recipients now? The zakat recipients. As we you know, mentioned in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who, who determines the eight different categories of the zakat recipients. He did not even allow Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam to determine who are the eligible people to receive zakat man. He said, إنما الصدقات للفقراء والمساكين والعاملين عليها والمؤلفة قلوبهم وفي الرقاب والغارمين وفي سبيل الله وابن السبيل فريضة من الله والله عليم حكيم. Who are the eight different categories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated in this ayah? The first one are the poor people. And poverty actually <coughs> means that those who do not, do not have sufficient resources. Say for example, a man who works for, I mean, um, who works for $3,000 per month and his real monthly expense are 5000 he is fakir, he's, he's a poor person, even though he's, you know, he does have a job, he does have a monthly salary, but whatever he, he makes per month is not sufficient for him. Is he eligible to take from zakat and mal? Definitely he is eligible to take from zakat and mal. As long as he is not that extravagant, as, as long as he, you know, pays to cover his, 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 his permissible expenses, then he is eligible to take from zakat and mal. Al-Masakeen are almost the same. Sometimes they, they differentiate between al fuqara and, and, and al masakin the needy, by saying that those who are lacking any resources, like someone had been laid off or you know missed his job for some reason, he does not have a monthly or an annual resource, he is miskin. And some madahib, uh, I mean uh, al fuqara or masakin are almost the same. Some of them they use al masakin as al fuqara, al fuqara as al masakin. It doesn't make that difference. I mean anyone who is in need to cover his basic his basic expenses, he is either fakir or miskin and he or she is definitely eligible to take from zakatu zakatul man zakat workers we need to pay attention to a point here if the muslim state or the muslim government is the one who is taking care of zakatul mal okay then those who are in charge are the only people who are you know authorized to determine how much is going to be the percentage should be deducted for you know for the zakat staff but here in the U.S., it's not the case. We do not have any Muslim state, you know, who is taking care of, of the cattle mail. And we have some, you know, charitable organizations. So if the one who is taking care of collecting and distributing the cattle mail does not belong to the Muslim state, then he or she has to, has to declare from the beginning how much he's going to deduct for himself as, a, as an administrative fees. So if you pay your cattle mail to Islamic Relief, for example, or for uh, life or for... Uh, 
uh, the CAT Foundation or whatever it is, they have to declare from the beginning that we do deduct 8% to cover our expenses, 10%, 12 plus or, or minus, it doesn't make a difference. But they have to declare how much they deduct for themselves. in order for you as a cash payer to be fully aware about the percentage will be deducted from your money and you know uh, uh, spent on the on the organization who you know uh, administrate the zakat collect and uh, and you know distribute zakat to zakat al mal al muallafati qulubuhum those who recently embraced islam whether they are financially in need or not, as long as we, as Muslim community, determine that they need to take from the Catamar, especially for those who struggle a lot with their, with their non-Muslim, you know, uh, community, non-Muslim, uh, non-Muslim parents, non-Muslim family, non-Muslim, you know, uh, close or blood relatives. Some, you know, some of them actually they really struggle when they embrace Islam. So it will be you know, a good sign from the Muslim community as a courtesy to support them with some money to show them that we do stand beside them, we do support them, we do not you know, abandon them or, the, or leave them alone. So whether he or she is in need or not in need for the money, he or she is eligible to take from you know, the Katima under, under the category of al muallafati Qulubuhum, those whose hearts are to be reconciled. Uh, uh, this, this category might include even the, even the community leaders. I mean, if someone that we strongly believe if we, if we give him some money he might have an influence in his community he might you know, co you know convince more people to embrace Islam as long as we determine that there is a maslah or interest in paying him from the Catalan then we can pay him from the Catalan the only thing we need to worry about is the religion of those who receive the money non-Muslims whom we expect whom we expect that they might embrace Islam are not eligible to take from the Catalan because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam when he sent Mu'ad I, uh, الله عنه, to Al Yemen, he told him, if they, if they, if they, if they embrace Islam and they perform this, their, their salah regularly, then tell them, O Mu'ad, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed a sadaqah or obligatory charity to be taken from their wealthy people and to be redistributed for their needy people. So it should be taken only from the Muslim wealthy people and should be you know, distributed only for the Muslim needy people. The non-Muslim has to be clear that the non-Muslim uh, people are not eligible to take from the Catholic. You may pay in charity for them, that will be fine. Optional sadaqah, that will be fine. They are definitely eligible to take from your sadaqah. Anyone who is in need, whether he's a Jewish person, a Christian, Muslim, it doesn't make any difference. But when it comes to fulfilling one of the pillars of Islam, paying the cattle mal, you have to make sure that the recipients of your money are Muslims and not non-Muslims. Also, في الرقاب those in bondage like you know, slave or, or, or captives. Alhamdulillah, we do not have, you know, uh, any more nowadays, but, you know, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala determined in the, in the Quran. If, in, in, uh, if because of any circumstances or any, you know, time Muslim community has some, you know, slaves or captives, then, you know, those people are eligible to take from the cattle male to free uh, themselves. al gharimin or the debt, right in. Uh, anyone who is in debt, as long as the following three conditions are fulfilled, then he or she is, you know, uh, eligible to take from the cattleman. The first condition is that the debtor must be in need for the financial aid. Let's say, for example, a person who makes uh, $5,000 per, per month, okay, and he is in debt of 10000 His monthly expense expenses are not more than 4000 Is he eligible to take from the cattleman under the category of al-ghalimi? He is not, because he can save $1,000 per month. Within 10 months, he will be able to pay his debt in full. So, he doesn't have to be a poor person. He has to be in need for this. And this, in, in, in our example, actually, this specific person, even though he is in debt, but he is not eligible to take from the cat and man under this category, because he can take care of his, of his debt by himself without, you know, taking from the cat and man. The debt was anchored because of the lawful expenses. 
to cover his you know monthly bills to pay the tuition fees of his kids at school or whatever it is if he did if he did borrow the money to buy something prohibited in Islam then definitely he is not eligible to take from the cattle man even if he is in need for this he cannot take from the cattle man and the third one the debt is due immediately if someone is in debt you know uh, of ten thousand dollars and the debt is due after one year he cannot take from the cattle mill today because the debt is not due as simple as simple as this so as long as the three conditions that we mentioned all of them at the same time are completely fulfilled then a person could take from the cattle mill under the category of al gharimin and vice versa if not then he is he is not fi sabilillah during the time of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and according to the vast vast majority of our scholars and fuqaha fi sabilillah actually it means for any legitimate jihad activities according to the vast majority of scholars anything could be considered as a jihad at that time especially for the volunteer soldiers who used to you know uh, uh, you know uh, join the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in his ma'arik they used not to be paid so this is why they were eligible to take from you know the cat and mal under the category of fi sabilillah now nowadays there is a question that we always receive in, in, in Amjah is it okay to pay my zakat to the masjid, to the Islamic school, to any you know Islamic organization that really provides a service for the Muslim community basically, basically under the category of Fisabilillah and according to the understanding of the vast majority of our scholars they are not however According to the uh, Muslim fiqh, uh, the, according to the Fiqh Council of the Muslim World League, Majmu al Fiqh al Islam al Tabi al Rabat al Alam al Islam, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam. This is Allah's blessing from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that they declared the fatwa in 1405 after Hijrah, which means 25 years ago. They said that in the West, in the West, since the Muslim organizations, the Masad, the, the, the you know the, the assemblies, the Muslim schools do not receive any fund from the government, from the state, from the county they are in need for this money then fi sabirillah fi sabirillah I mean it could be understood you know up to certain it could be understood you know to support the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if the masajid, if the Muslim schools are in need for this money and there is no way to take or to cover their expenses from any other different resources then taken from the cattle man actually is eligible is, I mean, is, is permissible. So based on this fatwa, which is alhamdulillah, it's not an individual fatwa, it's, it's a collective fatwa. It has been declared by, by, by a good number of scholars 25 years ago. Here in the U.S., yes, you can pay your zakat al-mal to the masjid. You can pay zakat al-mal to the you know, Islamic school. You can pay zakat al-mal to any other Islamic organization as long as they are in need for your money and they provide a real service for the Muslim community. In addition to that, if you decide to pay your zakat al-mal to cover the expenses or the operation expenses for the masjid you will gain another benefit which is the tax deductibility because the masjid is, 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 is a tax exempted organization they have you know their tax exempt number and their 501 you know uh, C number so this is why they are tax, you know, tax exempt so as they say you can you can catch two bears in one in one stone you pay your zakat and you deduct your zakat from your your tax which is, which is something actually good for the people who live here in this in this society and even subhanAllah, linguistically speaking, al-jihad actually it means to exert an effort. Al-jihad means to exert an effort. It does not have to be the military one. And subhanAllah, even, even in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about the physical fighting, He called it something else. He, you know, He called it al-qital. Al-qital it means the physical fighting. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالُ وَهُوَ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ فَلْيُقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلَ There is a big difference between al-qital and al-jihad. Al-qital is, is one of the categories of al-jihad. When you struggle, when you sacrifice your life to support the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is qital and jihad at the same time. But you, when, you, when you spend your time, when you spend your effort in supporting the cause of Allah azza wa jal, you know, calling uh, da'wah, calling people to, you know, to Islam, spreading Islam in the society, this is a jihad, but it's not, it's not qital. And even in the, in the, in the sunnah, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam differentiated between jihad and qital. According to Imam al-Bukhari in his sahih, Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, هل على النساء هل على النساء من جهاد أو رافض في الله are Muslim women are obliged to perform جهاد يسد نعم عليهن جهاد لا قتال فيه yes they are obligated to perform جهاد
in which there is no fighting in it. Al-Hajj wa al-Umrah, performing Hajj and Umrah. So the Prophet ﷺ in a very authentic hadith differentiates between the meaning of Al-Qital and the meaning of Al-Jihad. Back to the point. In this surah, when, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ He did not specify, you know, فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So, I mean, I mean, linguistically, it could mean that, you know, any expense, any, any legitimate expense to support the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to raise a new generation in the, in the U.S., to build more masajid, make it, you know, uh, available for the Muslim community to learn their religion is definitely, you know, eligible uh, expense to pay your zakat or mal for uh, building, uh, establishing more Islamic schools, uh, Islamic organizations, you know, charitable organizations, uh, social, or whatever, whatever we establish here in this society to protect our identity as Muslim community and to raise a new generation according to the Quran and the Sunnah, then, then you know, those organizations are uh, eligible to take from our Zakat al Man, Allah Wa'ala. Wayfarer or Ibn Sabil. <coughs> in one standard, by any circumstances, even, even if this person is, is, is a wealthy person in his original country, as long as he or she does not have an access to the money that he has in his original country and he is in need to cover his basic basic and legitimate expenses, then he or she is eligible to take from Zakat al mal Those who apply for political asylum nowadays and the refugees here in the, in the U.S., as long as they are Muslims, then they can take from, from Zakat al zakat mal And if you pay for those people through any of the Islamic organizations, I mean charitable organizations like, like Islamic Relief or Zakat Foundation or Life, then your Zakat will be, will be tax deductible at the same time, which is the benefit that we should, you know, pay attention to. Now, on the other hand, since we have eight different categories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finished in the Qur'an, it means that we do have some other people who are not eligible to take from the cattle man. Anyone who is, who is rich, wealthy enough, does not need the financials of people, definitely he is not eligible to take from the cattle man. He cannot take from the cattle man. And even if he, even, 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 I mean, even, even if he claimed to be a, a, a poor person and took from Zakat al mal this is a sin, this is a great sin in the sight of Allah. But if we know in advance that this person is not, uh, you know, poor enough, then we should not give him from, from Zakat al mal Anyone who is, you know, uh, physically able to work and to take care of his expense, even if he is a poor person, as long as he chooses not to work, then he is not eligible to take from Zakat al mal Al Mutafarrigun al Ibadah, the devotees. Anyone who is just staying in the masjid, you know, spending his time worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he cannot take from Zakat al Because he benefits himself and he does not benefit the community. While the students of knowledge are eligible to take from Zakat al as long as they are, you know, uh, full time students, fully dedicated for seeking knowledge, they do not have to be students in the, you know, of, uh, of Islamic studies. I mean, anyone who, who, who goes to medicine school, who, you know, who is uh, pursuing uh, a degree in engineering, pharmacy, business, whatever it is, as long as, you know, the, his major is, is permissible in Islam to study, then he is or she is definitely eligible to take from the Catholic. Some of our scholars, especially overseas in Saudi Arabia, they said that if he is talibu sharia, if he is a student, in 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 Sharia, then he is eligible to take you know from the Catholic well and vice versa. Actually, there is no basis for this settle. Even 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 if you go to any other college, and you benefit the Muslim community after you graduate and get your degree, then you are eligible to take from the Catholic well as long as you are in need for this money and you are fully dedicated and a full time student. <coughs> Renouncers of Islam. If anyone declares a, a, you know a, a clear and explicit hatred or enmity toward Islam or Muslimin, even if he or she is a Muslim, which unfortunately some people nowadays they claim to be Muslims and they stand against Islam and Muslimin clearly. Those people are not eligible to take from the Catholic mal, even if they claim to be Muslims. Non Muslims, as we said, are not eligible to take from the Catholic mal. Close dependents relatives. What means that your parents and your grandparents, your children and your grandchildren are not eligible to take from the Catholic mal. Why? Because there is a mutual responsibility of sponsoring each other. What means that if your dad is an old man and he is in need for your sponsorship and you are 
financially able to sponsor your, your father, then you have to sponsor him, and vice versa. Even if you are, you know, qualified and hold a degree and physically able to work, and you do not work for some reason, I mean, you could not find a job, okay, and your dad is wealthy enough and rich enough to cover your expenses, then he has to cover your expenses even though you can work, but actually you do not find any, any job. So, because of this mutual responsibility and, and, and sponsoring one another, our car said that the, that the close dependent relatives, meaning the parents, the grandparents, uh, children and grandchildren are not eligible to take from the customer. How about your uncle? You can you you know you can you know you can pay the cattle mail on your uncle. You can give your zakat and mail to your uncle. How about your cousins? The same. Your uh, your 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 paternal uncle, your maternal uh, uncle, your cousins uh, from your mom's side, from your dad's side, they are the same. You can pay you know the cattle mail. How about your brothers and sisters? If they are in need, your blood brothers and sisters are they are, are they eligible to take from your zakat? Yes, they are eligible to take from your the cattle man, as long as they are in need for that. No restriction in distri distributing the cattle man. In the <coughs> a hadith that we have from the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, even though all these points, by, by the way, are, are so, dis you know, uh, so debatable, between his cards, like for example, according to Imam Shafi'i, you have to cover, you know, all the eight different categories of uh, the zakat receipt. This is, you know, his school of thought. However, this point is not unanimously accepted between other, uh, you know, uh, juristic schools. So this is why I'm, I'm saying from the beginning that all these points are debatable and not agreed upon. The first one. No maximum amount to give to one recipient. If your zakat is 5,000, okay, and you want to specify or, or, or give your whole zakat for this year, only and only for the students of knowledge in, in Austin, and you found out that one of the students is more eligible than other people, is it okay for you to pay the whole zakat, the 5,000, only for one person? That would be fine. There is no specification, there is no restriction in Islam showing that you must distribute your zakat on more than one, 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 one category or even more than one person within the same category. Second one, no obligation to distribute zakat to all of the eight categories. You know, this is against what Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah adopted in his uh, jurisdiction school. No obligation to give the cash money. Let's say, for example, that you have some crops or, or, or agricultural products and the market value of the crops is 5,000, okay? Is it okay for you to pay, I mean, to keep the crops for, you, for yourself and to pay 5,000 instead of paying the, paying the zakat via crops or via agricultural products? Yes, you can, you can do so. No obligation even to give all poor people in the area. As, a, you know, as, as I said, there is no indication in the Sunnah that you have to cover all the members of the same category in the society. Like, for example, if, if for this year you want to pay your zakat only for, uh, for the refugees. Okay, you don't have to pay for every single refugee in your area. One person, you know, is, is enough. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's up to you. Also, no annual distribution is required, what means that paying on monthly basis is acceptable. In this case, I mean, if you choose to pay on monthly basis, you should estimate your zakat. How much is it? Is it, is it 6,000 approximately, roughly speaking? Is it $6,000 per year? If this is the case, then you can pay in advance on a $500 basis every month. Now, by the end of the year, you have to recalculate your zakat. If your zakat is $6,000 and you already paid 6000 then you are break even. If you paid only 5000 then you have to pay extra $1,000. If you paid 7000 okay, already paid 7000 while your real zakat is only 6000 then you should deduct the extra 1000 from your zakat of the next year and so on and so forth. It's a very simple, you know, uh, calculation. Paying on monthly basis actually will, 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 will help you not paying a big amount of money in a time in which you are not ready to pay the amount. So, making a monthly payment or installment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be, will be fine as, as long as you pay, you know, uh, 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 your zakat by the end of the, of the year. Always fairness and justice are required. I mean, when you, when you decide to pay your zakat al-mal only for one person, you have to be 
just and fair enough. You have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why you have chosen only this person to give him your whole amount? How about the other people? I mean, if you, if, if, if you realize that more than one person are in this same level of need of your money, it's not fair actually to give your zakat only for one person. However, at the end of the day, you know, it's up to you and you know, you have to be just and, and fair enough in distributing your zakat. Uh, this will be inshallah the end of the second session. We will take a, a 10 minutes to break, question and answer, and then we will resume the third session. Questions? Who has the right, or based on what, we determine the beginning of the, of the, of the hawl? I mean, is it, is it by choice? Do I have the right to start my hawl in the beginning of Ramadan? Or, or based on what? Actually, it's not by choice. It's not by choice. Al hawl actually should start on the, on the same day in which you constitute an isab. Like, for example, If you're, if you're, uh, I mean, if you are a businessman, on the day that you constituted, okay, or accumulated seventeen hundred dollars, then this is the beginning of your hawl. You don't have the right, I mean, to start before or or after. And how did we come up with the seventeen hundred? It, it, it's only the market value of eighty-five grams of of gold. If it is changed to increase to uh, uh, to a thousand, then on the day that you that you accumulate two thousand, this is you know the beginning of your hawl and so on and so forth. How about adjusting the zakat due date? Is it is it permissible or not? Because actually many people would like to pay their zakat in the month of Ramadan to get more barak and more blessing and more reward. What if what if your hawl actually is on the month of uh, on the month of uh, Muharram, Safar, Rabi' al Awal, Rabi' al Thani, okay? And you know, every year in Rabi'a Sani you have to pay your zakat. How many months left, you know, to, to Ramadan? Muharram, Safar, Rabi'a Lawa, Rabi'a Sani. Jumad al Ula, Jumad al Sani, Rajab, Sha'ban, and then Ramadan. So you have, you have, you have four more months. I mean, in order for you to shift your, you know, zakat due date into, uh, into the, to the month of Ramadan. Now, what is the, what is the right way, I mean, to make your hawl start by the beginning of Ramadan? In the next year, in Rabi'a Thani, you have to you have to pay your zakat in full, and you have to estimate the zakat of the next four months. If it is for for example two thousand dollars, you have to pay them in Rabi'a al I mean in Rabi'a Thani. So next year, in Rabi'a Thani, you don't have to pay. Why? Because you paid from Rabi'a Thani until until Ramadan. This is the only way that we can shift it, you know, front to the month of of uh, of uh, Ramadan. You cannot say in Rabi'a Thani that I'm not going to pay now if my zakat is six thousand. And two more thousands for the four months. Okay, I'm gonna pay in the month of Ramadan six plus two, eight thousand. It doesn't work like this because actually zakat al mal is like a salah. In salah, zakat al al mu'minin kitaban maqul. It has to be paid in the zakat due date. You don't have the right to determine what day it has to be paid. So you cannot delay your zakat in Rabi'a and say, okay, in the month of Ramadan I'm gonna pay the zakat of, of, of fourteen, uh, fourteen twenty-seven plus four months. It doesn't work like this. You have to pay in advance for the four months until Ramadan and then in the next year the zakat due date will be automatically shifted to the beginning of, of Ramadan. Delay in paying zakat al-mal is prohibited unless there is a legitimate reason. Among the legitimate reasons is that you run out of cash, you don't have money. You have a piece of land, for example, and the zakat is 10,000, you do not have 10,000. As simple as it. Do you have to borrow the money to pay your zakat? You don't have to borrow. Once you get the 10,000 zakat al-mal of your piece of land, then you pay your zakat. If someone delayed his zakat intentionally for no legitimate reason and the money or the zakat al mal has gone, stolen, okay, destroyed, whatever it is, does he have to pay his zakat al mal one more time? Believe it or not, yes, he does have to pay his zakat al mal one more time because actually it was his default. Why did he, you know, delay his payment since he knew that, that zakat is due today? Why he delayed it you know, until, until next week? If there was a legitimate reason, I mean, he did his best to pay his zakat on time, but how, however, he could not, and the money or the zakat might have been lost or stolen or destroyed, then he doesn't have to pay his zakat one more time. As we said, prepayment of zakat is permissible 
according to the hadith authentically narrated that the Prophet asked his uncle Al Abbas to pay his zakat two years in, in advance, and actually he uh, he did. Unpaid zakat for the past year is to be paid as soon as possible, and no one has the authority to waive it, whether it is one year back or two years or ten years. Actually, a Muslim must pay this amount. It doesn't mean that he has to pay them at the spot today. It means that he owes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this amount and no one has the right to waive or to compromise this pillar of Islam and say, okay, you know, the amount is too big for you to pay, then you are with, let's, let's you know, start opening a new page with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and start paying, the, you know, this year. It doesn't work. You have to pay your zakat even if you did not pay for the last, you know, 10 years. Also, if someone, if someone who is required to pay zakat in men passed away, passed away after the zakat due date. We should not say that uh, that he already passed away then you know you know his zakat should be waived. Actually it should not be waived. Before we distribute the inheritance or the wealth uh, or his wealth you know for his inheritors or for his legal heirs, we have to deduct zakat al mal and then after that the rest of the money should be distributed accordingly. We don't have to pay zakat al mal in the on the on the same uh, uh, zakat has to be paid in the same, a minimum of, of the same value. If your zakat is, 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 uh, is 10,000, you have to pay a minimum of 10,000. If you want to make it 11 or 12,000, that will be appreciated and, and rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you should not go beyond or less than the, you know, the, the, the due zakat. But does not have to be paid in the same kind of wealth. If you, if you have some agricultural, uh, agricultural, uh, products and, you know, the, your zakat is 5,000, you don't have to pay it, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the agricultural product. If, if, if your zakat is 5,000, then you just pay via cash money 5,000, and that will be, you know, enough and, and, and sufficient. Some other rules regarding, you know, uh, uh, zakat and mal, proper intention prior to the payment. What does that mean? Let's say, for example, that uh, that few months ago, you donated $5,000 for the, for the message as a donation. Okay, and today you said, okay, oh Allah, whatever I paid three months ago is my zakah for this year. It doesn't work like this. You cannot go and, and on the day of Al Eid to Walmart and, and, and buy a, a frozen, you know, goat and say, oh, oh no, this, this is my udhiyah for Al Eid. It doesn't work. It has to be a live one, and you have to you say, Bismillah, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Maha, Minka, wa Ilaik, Allah, Maha, the udhiyatu, Abdi, Kafulam, and then you scatter it. It's, it's exactly the same with the, with the zakah. The intention has to be has to be existed before the ibadah, before the zakah. And not after it, and, and you know, it's it's exactly like 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 the like the salah that we do. I mean, you cannot you know perform two rakat, okay, during the fajr time, and then after that you you know you say okay, whatever I I prayed is salat al fajr. Don't work. It has to be prior to the ibadah and not not after it. Inna al-amal bil-niyat. Proper assessment. You have to be very accurate. You have to spend enough time in auditing your. Your, your your properties and your assets, and make sure that you pay a minimum a minimum of the cattle mail required for you. If you want to pay more, that will be fine. But you know, make sure you do not pay less than what you are supposed to pay. Proper recipients. Make sure that the people who received your zakah are eligible. If you trust the cat foundation, if you if you trust you know life, if you trust Islamic relief, that you know that's fine. If you do not trust them, then you have to specify from the beginning that that brothers, I want my zakah to be paid for. Al-Fuqara, for Al-Masakeen, for al ghalimin you have to specify the recipients from the beginning, and they have to adhere to your, you know, to your request. Basically, the Muslim government or the Muslim state is the one who is required to take care of the zakat duty, collecting and distributing the money. If it is not the case, like the Muslims who reside here in the U.S., then any trustworthy organizations, like, you know, those organizations that I, I, I you know, I, I mentioned, if we do not have any Islamic organization in our city, then any, uh, I mean, the Muslim community, the Imam, the Masjid, the Board of Trustees, or, or, or the the cat committee in the Masjid, you know, could take care of of your zakat. If not, then you should take care of your zakat by yourself. The zakat staff, actually, or the one who collects the zakat, he has to be a Muslim, he has to be sane, adult, trustworthy, and he should have, you know, the, the minimum, you know, background in the zakat 
fiqh, I mean, he should know how to calculate the zakah, and you know how to know how to determine the zakah, how to calculate the zakah. What is you know, what are the zakatable wealth, the non-zakatable wealth? I mean, he has to be well educated in the area that he's gonna work on. Does not accept any any gifts or or, or bribes, report and declare whatever he collects. So trustworthiness is something very very important for those who work in the zakah. As I said, you can restrict your zakat al-mal. If you choose to pay your zakat to any of the charitable organization, you can tell them that for this year, I want my zakat to be paid only and only for the pure, for the students of knowledge, the poor students of knowledge in Bangladesh, for example. For the, for the, for, 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 for those who are in debt, for them, for this year. And they have to adhere to your because if they cannot fulfill it, then they have to tell you in advance that we cannot fulfill it. Can we transfer your money to some other recipient? If yes, then that's fine. If no, then they have to, you know, pay you your, your money back. How about transporting the castle mail? The basic rule, actually, basic rule is that the castle mail should be distributed in the same locality. Because actually the poor people around you I mean, I mean, will will I mean, will feel that that they were not dealt with justly. If they know that you are a rich person and you pay your zakat, and they do not, you know, see any any zakat or donation from you, it will it will create create actually a lot of, you know, enmity and uh, and hatred in the in the society. So the basic rule is that zakat al man has to stay in the same locality. According to the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, فَأَعْلِمُهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ اسْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ زَكَاتًا تُؤْخَذُ مِنْ أَغْنِيَائِهِمْ فَتُرَدُّ فِي فُقَرَائِهِمْ The zakat of should be taken from the wealthy in the locality and redistributed for the poor people or the needy people or eligible people in the same society. This is the basic rule. However, if the Muslim state is the one who is taking care of the zakat, then it's up to them. You don't have to worry about your zakat, whether it, you know, it was distributed in the same locality or not. I mean, it's, it's their job. But you know, if, if you are the one who is taking care of your zakat, then you have to make sure that you pay your zakat for the people in need in your locality. Unless unless if there is a real pressing need or you know um, crisis overseas or, or, or some people who are more eligible overseas then you can transfer your money and send it you know uh, overseas otherwise you pay it in the same you know in the same place in the same locality this is just a, 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 a schedule to help you calculating your zakah this is the uh, uh, you know the items that we mentioned under the category personal wealth the amount you should you know put it here you just you know fill out the you know the the, the you know this application or this uh, schedule and this is the due zakah and this is the amount you go to the next one the business wealth and you know you just like your your zakah it's just a way to help you calculating your your zakah this is all what I have regarding this issue all about zakah in the U S Allah ma'alimna ma'in fauna معلمت نوزد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين لا والله لا مش مش عندي I think it could be covered and pasted on it I think طيب نعم اختبر That would be fine, but but this this intention does not waive you from calculating your zakah. Well, what if you, what what if you did not what if you did not you know pay the the minimum amount of, of your of your zakah? I mean, it has it has to be calculated. What if your zakah for this year is is three thousand, and the whole donation that you did pay during the whole year is two thousand five hundred? Well, if you if you are sure a hundred percent that whatever you paid already during the year would cover the minimum uh, or, or or the or, or the due zakah, that that would be fine. However, you have to make sure that you pay your donation.
for the right recipients. Okay, I mean, I mean, uh, paying for one of the, uh, I mean.